All right, so I just got finished watching a video by Luke Smith talking about pulse audio and like, you know, just problems with trying to use ALSA on Linux. And it made me think about one of the really nice parts about BSD. Uh, I'm gonna talk about OpenBSD uh, from now on. And that's <clears throat> because my familiarity with the software I'm gonna be talking about is through OpenBSD, but it is also on other BSDs. And as far as I know, you could probably also get it installed. I don't know about working well, but I know you could get it installed on Linux um, as far as I know. So <clears throat> the thing that I'm gonna talk about today is SNDIO which is the sound system, uh, I, I, I'm sure there's a more technical term for it, but it's the sound, the sound system that you're gonna find on BSDs, and uh, I know for sure is the default one on OpenBSD. And SNDIO is really quite simple uh, as a sound server setup thing um, for managing your sound hardware and, or your audio hardware and, um, software interactions through it. So when it comes to like Linux, the way it works is you typically start with ALSA and um, ALSA is poorly documented, like horrifically documented. It's terrible. If you, if you want to just use ALSA alone on Linux, it's virtually impossible um, because, well, without modifying the config, it literally can't it can't use two sources of audio. Like if you wanted to play music through like MPD or some music player and watch a YouTube video at the same time, literally cannot do that. Uh, you have to add in like functionality for that, I believe through a module. And then, then it can do that. And then uh, if you want to like record your, your desktop audio with your microphone, uh, also can't do that. It literally cannot view outputs as, as inputs. So you, you just can't do that. Uh, I mean, I'm sure there's some way of getting it done, but for a regular user and somebody who's, well, normal, uh, you're probably never going to be able to figure out how to do it. And, th and this is not, this is not because like also it's just a terrible product. It's just very poorly documented and does require a lot of configuration to do what we would consider uh, basic things in the modern audio like world. You you know, recording your desktop audio is a pretty normal thing to do nowadays. That wasn't always the case. Like you, you didn't always do that. So uh, I, I can understand why also uh, being a very old project doesn't doesn't really function the way that it should in the modern era. Um, but then be, because of all the f like f failures, I guess, uh, or shortcomings of also you on Linux also have to use pulse audio or pipe wire, some kind of system like that is nowhere near as simple as also would be considered also as a very small program. Like, um, SNDIO is, I, I haven't checked, but I would be heavily surprised if it was larger or especially considerably larger than ALSA. Uh, I would assume it's probably just as lightweight as ALSA is, uh, but you have to rely on something like Pulse Audio or Pipewire. Uh, and I, as, as far as I know, those are still going to interact with ALSA. So you have like you have like this layered list going up for audio requirements on Linux. And on OpenBSD, the really refreshing part uh, for me has been, and has been, because I've used it in the past, is working with SNDIO, not only is it so much simpler than, you know, like Pulse Audio by comparison, it's, it's a much simpler thing. You have all of those features. SNDIO by default can, you know, work with different devices. Uh, it has monitoring uh, for outputs, uh, so you can actually, you know, record an output um, and use it, treat it like an input for, you know, a recording. So it has it has all of the functionality and 
stuff that you would expect out of a modern audio system, but it's so small. You, you're, you're not having to like build up and things get more complicated as time go time goes on, and you end up with this monster of a audio subsystem or stack. Uh, so, so that you can get things done. And the, and the thing is, is like, it makes sense that you don't want to do things this way because, <clears throat> well, I mean, Pulse Audio has problems and errors. Uh, even Pipewire does uh, all the time. I have not had a single issue with my audio, period. Uh, now, I will say I have had issues with my audio in the sense that like, I didn't know that, um, like at one point when I was very new to OpenBSD, I switched, uh, like there's a, there's a setting that you can put for SNDIO, uh, where it will automatically detect a USB audio device and, and set that to the default audio device. Uh, and I set that without knowing it. So I was confused at, at why I was only able to, well, I wasn't only able to, but when I used the default, it it wasn't the same one as before on OpenBSD. But that's not like it malfunctioning or, you know, it not working properly. That's me not understanding what I did. Like, I manually put that in there. So, really, in all honesty, the hard part about SNDIO is not knowing how to work it. I mean, it's very simple, so you can read the man page on it. Because the way SNDIO works is you have uh, SNDIO D, which is like the daemon for running the audio system in the background. And then you have SNDIO CTL, which is the command that you're going to run to actually interact with it. You know, to change your output level, <clears throat> uh, you can change the level of certain uh, like outputs that you have, like programs running. Um, so you get you get the same level of control that you would expect from your sound system, like on Linux or whatever. But it it's just much much more simplified, much more um, elegant to work with. And I will say it's probably hard for most people to get into SNDIO if you're not into the terminal because I don't know about any graphical like I don't know of a Pavu control uh, comparison for audio uh, for SNDIO like I would assume I've I've actually never used OpenBSD with a graphical um, like desktop environment I, I I've never done that I haven't like loaded up LXDE or um, QT, well, good lord, not QT, KDE, GNOME. I've never done that on OpenBSD, um, not because it's impossible, but just because I, I, I don't want those desktop environments. So, but I would assume those, they all come with their own utilities for like managing audio. So I'm going to assume they have an, a way of managing your audio graphically, but I, I don't know that there's, you know, a real comparison to like pop and control a desktop or like a system agnostic version of messing with SNDIO. Uh, you just, I know you can do it through the terminal, but it's, it's phenomenally easy. Like I write my own scripts to like change like the output level, like audio levels, stuff like that. So um, it's, it's actually kind of more fun to work with it that way. Cause you know, again, I actually know my audio is going to work. Um, and I, I know the way of interacting with it is through a very simple command. So if I want to build out scripts for key bindings and like just automating different stuff that I would do with it, uh, or I want to have like, you know, my audio change with certain program loads, I can write a script to open the program that changes the audio beforehand, does all that stuff. Like it's, it's really super easy to interact with it and it makes it makes audio n not only as simple as you're probably used to, but you don't have a lot of the errors that you're going to run into with Pulse Audio or Pipewire because the system is not as complex. So there's there's less places where it can fail or where it will fail. So now I'm not saying this to be like, you know, audio is freaking awesome on OpenBSD and BSD in general and like you should switch over and like screw 
you know, Linux and its audio system. Like, that's not what I'm saying. I'm, I'm simply saying, for me, working with it, SNDIO, has been much, much easier and reliable than audio on Linux. That being said, BSD in general is not really made for, like, audio engineering and, like, super... If you're, like, super into audio work and, like, creativity stuff, there's there's not really, especially on OpenBSD, there's, there's not really great options for making music and stuff like that. There are options, don't get me wrong, but I, I, I'm, not, I'm not saying there are great ones. And you probably don't want to go use OpenBSD for audio production. I don't know. It, it could be great, but probably not. I, I just I will say I find it funny that the that the tool that you're going to use for audio on OpenBSD is so much simpler, so much it seems well better made. Like it just it seems so much more crisp to use. It functions exactly as you would expect. It's not complicated. It's not anyone anyone can learn to to use it and it's so well documented that if you wanted to go and ask somebody like you didn't want to read the documentation for whatever reason you're one of those people who like you don't read someone can easily explain to you what the documentation says because it, they've and especially if they've been using something like OpenBSD or FreeBSD or whatever system uh they're using that runs SNDIO. They're familiar with it. It's it, it's not something that's like you're not going to ask them a question of how to get something done that they probably don't know how to do or have done before. Um, I, I there's there's very little things that I think someone could ask me about how to do an SNDIO that I wouldn't know how to do. It everything is pretty simple. It. it it's not very complicated at all, and the documentation explains everything extremely well, which you don't get on Linux, which makes the necessity of Pulse Audio or something like Pulse Audio very big. And I, I, I'm sure, I'm sure there's going to be people that tell me in the comments and who don't watch this far that, um, well, you just don't understand. Like there's there's this like litany of features that Pulse Audio and Pipewire provides that ALSA and SNDIO don't provide. But as a user of SNDIO, or SNDIO, I haven't found any features that I would need out of my audio stack that like I don't already have. It works. All of my audio devices work. And I mean, that's, I mean, I have like two different audio interfaces. Both of them work. Uh, you know, I'm using XLR microphones. I've got, uh, uh, actual like speaker system that's plugged in like nothing I'm using doesn't work with it so I can't imagine me needing something else but sure you might have those features and that might be a reason to use pulse audio but or, or you know pipe wire or like whatever but they're so much more complex they're so much more prone to problems I mean pipe wire is much better and less likely to fail but Regardless, they they both are more complex, and I don't I don't think most people want added complexity when not needed. And I think it's kind of the simplicity and beauty of of SNDIO. It does everything that you would expect a modern system to be able to do for audio without being extremely large of a project with like, a, a, I mean, a crap ton of different features and, like, complexity that you just, you probably will never use and most users don't need, at, at, at least in my opinion. Now, if the entire premise of this video and, like, my opinion on SNDIO uh, upsets you or um, you think you've got a really good disagreement, and you probably do, um, on why Pipewire and Pulse Audio are so much better and I shouldn't, like, I, I don't really have a point with SNDIO being more simple because these have features that are, like, industry standard or something like that, share. Please, please comment down below and let me know. But I, I, I think my point is quite simple. Mo 
most people want a simple and efficient way of working with audio. SNDIO does that remarkably well, and it's far less complicated and far less error prone than what most people are used to on the Linux space. And I don't know, if, if you haven't tried like messing around with audio and stuff on BSD and, uh, and for whatever reason think you should check out SNDIO, do it. It's it's actually pretty cool. Like even if you're not going to use it, it's just it's nifty to see how it works and see the simplicity of it. So, yeah. Hopefully you enjoyed the video and uh, I am recording this in the same day as the last video I, I, I j just actually uploaded that. So, um, yeah, I'm in the same clothes and everything. Don't worry. Uh, it's not like I'm, you know, gross and won't change and shower tomorrow. I probably will. Who knows? We'll find out. I'll see you guys. Bye.